Hey, Sean, welcome to an evening post. Thank you for clicking on this. Um, this morning, I had a little bit of an anxiety attack. And it's been a few weeks, a few months even, since I've had an anxiety attack. If you're unfamiliar with my anxiety, which I've talked about before on my channel, so if you, you've been around for a while, bear with me for a moment. But so often, my anxiety manifests itself as nausea and then a complete lack of appetite. And so when I'm feeling the anxiety, I don't want to eat, I don't want to, like, I don't want to mess with my, my ecosystem in any way. But that means I don't eat and then hours go by and I'm still afraid to eat and then it doesn't get better but plus I'm actually hungry and I start to get you know lightheaded and low blood sugar and whatever else is happening chemically inside my body. That's, that's what my anxiety feels like and it's a, a dark spiral and it's really difficult to get out of sometimes which is why so often what triggers my anxiety is not a particular experience. Like I used to think it was travel or, or you know new situations or starting a new job or you know whatever I thought it was, so often what became my anxiety was worrying about my anxiety, where it wouldn't be some element of a trip that would make me anxious. It would be like before the trip and in the beginning of the trip, thinking to myself, like, what if I, what if I get anxious? What if I can't eat on this trip? What if I get really sick? What if on day two, I'm so weak that I can't get out of bed? What if on day five, I need to go to the hospital? And it's that that just spins in my head. And that's a difficult thing to control because so often there's there's so many uncertain things going on, and especially right now with the pandemic. And that's what I wanted to talk about. There's so much uncertainty right now, and there's so much fear uh, and and unknown, and then conflicting, not data. The data is consistent, but conflicting um, perspectives on what we should do. And so often my least favorite perspectives are the ones that selfishly put other people at risk and I get frustrated and when I go out in public I have this anxiety of like I hope no one has one of these you know TikTok episodes where somebody's gonna freak out on me in public and yell at me without a mask on uh, while I'm holding my son or something like that and and I know I'm not alone in this um, so without going into any more details if you want to know more details for some reason on my podcast, if you want to go find that, the Colonel Sean podcast, I've just recorded the audio live as I've had panic attacks on a couple different occasions. Um, and that's not all my podcast is, but that's that's what's relevant here. What I wanted to say was there's a lot of people who experience anxiety. And if you're not somebody who does, I want to say first, you're lucky. Congratulations. There's a lot of people who are jealous. But two... You might, you might experience anxiety, but just not know that that's what, what it's called necessarily. It might not even be called that. But by talking about it, there, there's things that we all feel, there's pressures that we have, and there's symptoms that we feel and, and that chemically affect our body and therefore our performance and our friendships and our life. And so often by talking about it, we can either have that help just from, from the communication, from opening up, from not trying to carry it by yourself, but if not, it can open up doors to people who have better resources, people who know good counselors who might be well-versed in what you're experiencing. I was so nervous to talk about my anxiety at first. And I remember I, I first publicly posted something on Facebook when I was on Facebook back in 2013, I think. Um, I had just bought my first house and I, I posted like, hey, I have anxiety and I can't eat. And if we're ever out and I'm not eating, that's why. And asking me if I'm okay doesn't help. And I got so much support from that. I was shocked at how many people who I was close friends with who never knew that I felt that way, how many people responded like, oh my gosh, I have the same thing, or you know, I overeat when it happens, or I do this, or you know. So many people struggle with things, this anxiety, and we were all carrying it alone, which only makes it worse. And so I end this video with, with two things for you. If you're someone who experiences anxiety, talk to somebody about it. Or if you think you might be experiencing anxiety, talk to somebody about it. Pick somebody you trust. Um, put it out there. There's support groups online. There's a lot of safe spaces you can go to talk to about it if you're worried that your friends will judge you. In my experience, no one has ever judged me in spite of me fearing it. No one has ever been rude to me or, or made fun of me for being weak like I had always feared they would. It's always been a good experience. So talk to somebody if you're ready. But two, if you're not somebody who experiences that, um, and even if you are, give people in general a little bit of leeway. 
You never know what somebody's struggling with. And this morning I had a smile on my face, but I was feeling grim. And I know that if I was out somewhere in public, it, it wouldn't take much to really ruin my day and make me miserable. And anyone else could be in that same situation. So take a breath and understand that people could be struggling with stuff that you can't see. Even if it looks like they've got their whole lives put together, there could be stuff under the surface that is causing real problems. Um, so don't behave in a way that could potentially make someone's life more uncomfortable than it might already be. That's all I got. Thanks for, thanks for spending a couple minutes with me tonight. Tomorrow's episode is going to be happier, I promise. That's all I got. See you later. Bye.